People get life insurance for reimbursement in an accident, but what if it was all planned? In today's video, we'll talk about eight times men or women killed for life insurance. Whether it's wives who kill their husbands for their life insurance or men doing the same to their wives and kids, let's go. Number one, Amy Archer Gilligan. Amy Archer Gilligan seemed like your average sweet old lady who set up her own nursing home in Windsor, Connecticut to care for the elderly and sick that couldn't deal with their families. She seemed like a good Samaritan that took great care of her residents till they passed away. While death seems evident in an old retirement home, something sinister happened as a border sister observed that most tenants died after naming $1,000 or their insurance policy money in Amy's name. Soon she was investigated and police found bags of arsenic in her home, which she claimed was to kill some pesky rats. But pesky rats were sure she meant her tenants as autopsies of the elderly found traces of arsenic and strychnine, which were used to kill them slowly until they succumbed to the effects of the poison. She also did the same to her first and second husband and bagged their life insurance policies in the process. Amy Archer Gilligan was charged with five counts of poisoning, including two for her husband. Although she was suspected of killing 20 people from 1911 to 1916, she was charged with one murder. She was later tried in a court where she pleaded insanity. However, that did little to work in her favor since she ended up with life in prison. Number two, Joaquin Shadow Ram Sr. A Manassas man was convicted of the murder of his older child of 15 months for nothing more than a mere thousand dollars worth of insurance money. Why would anyone kill their child? It's irrational and unjustifiable in any circumstances, and those were precisely the thoughts of the jury who wanted him to get the death punishment for his crime. Joaquin maintained for four years that he was innocent of the crime. Still, later testimonies from inmates within his prison holding cell came forward. They revealed that he bragged about the crime. The mother, Hera McLeod, was devastated, stating that she will forever regret not saving her son Prince from the monster that was her father who drowned him in solvable problems like sloth, greed, and laziness. The grandmother said that for the few months that Prince was alive, he made a significant impact on their lives, only to be taken away from them at such a young age. Roms was convicted of life in prison for capital murder and 10 years for pretenses regarding the case. For $500,000, he threw away his own life and the rest of his son. Number three, Kevin Puccia. Former pastor Kevin Puccia was sentenced to life in prison for ordering a hit on a blind, developmentally disabled man by the name of Lemuel Wallace in an attempt to cash in on his $1.4 million life insurance policies. Kevin Puccia came clean in 2010 on the 2009 assassination of Wallace, where he was picked up from a group home that he resided in and was shot dead in a park bathroom by an unknown assailant. In addition to the life in prison charge, Kevin Puccia also received 45 years in prison for insurance fraud charges. But how was he going to cash in on the life insurance policy? Kevin Puccia pretended to be Wallace's sibling, worked as a caseworker for a nonprofit organization, and enlisted himself as one of the few people who would receive a portion of Wallace's life insurance policy. The two suspected people who paid off for the killing were James Omar Clea and Kareem Jamal Clea. Kevin Puccia blamed both brothers for committing the crime, but not partaking in the killing personally. But Kevin Puccia's testimonies were often erratic and all over the place, so the two brothers were acquitted from the trial. The Clea brothers' defense attorney came forward saying Kevin was desperate for a lighter sentence and blamed them on the assurance of getting off with a lower serving sentence. Still, Assistant State Attorney Robin Weirly said there was no such agreement. What we found immoral and crazy was that Puccia paid the assailant $50,000 from the funds he collected from the church he founded in 2005 and burned down two years later. Number four, Alex Mardo. Alex Mardo, a prominent South Carolina lawyer who had found the bodies of his wife and son three months prior, tried to orchestrate his death so his sole son would become heir of the remaining life insurance policy of a whopping $10 million. The plan failed as the bullet barely grazed his skull and Alex followed up by calling 911, where he was picked up by a rural county road. Edward Curtis Smith, the alleged shooter, has now been charged with assisted suicide, insurance fraud, and many other accounts. Murdo handed over the weapon to Curtis to end his life on a Hampton County road, but missed, drove off, and disposed of the gun quickly, thinking he got the job done, but in vain. Alex Murdo had been suffering for as many as 20 years regarding opioid addiction, where he would get the illegal drugs for the same people who convicted him to set up his suicide. With the death of his wife and kids, things only became worse worse for him and his issues were 
exacerbated, leading to his decision to commit suicide and leave the insurance to his son. He also resigned from his law firm a few days before the incident. The incidents of the death of his wife and son are still unresolved to this day. We hope Alex finds the strength to get on his feet and make ends meet for the remaining family he has instead of throwing his life away. Evelyn Dick Everyone had to agree that Evelyn Dick was beautiful. Still, no one can deny that she was a cold-blooded killer in the truest sense as she was named the infamous Torso Killer. Kids were loitering and playing in the woods of Hamilton, Ontario when they came across a gruesome scene of a headless and limbless torso. Kids reported it quickly to the adults and the authorities were informed. It was found out that the body belonged to the streetcar and bus driver John Dick who had been wedded to Evelyn for six months, but the two were already estranged from each other. Evelyn spilled the tea to the police by bragging of strange tales of the mafia and her boyfriends. So Evelyn was charged with murder along with her father and boyfriends. As the story became hot, her stories of affairs with many rich married men came forward. It was revealed that she had slept with over 150 men, including the judge. They also found the mummified body of Evelyn Dick's own son in a cement suitcase. She was sentenced to life in prison but was shortly released in 11 years and no one has seen her ever since. Number 6. Mary Elizabeth Wilson Mary Elizabeth Wilson has been with almost four husbands and lost all of them, which gained her Mary Widow of Windy Nook. Some of her marriages lasted only a few weeks and she became the rightful heir of their insurance funds in the States. This itself should come as a red flag, but no one picked up on it. She had a sense of dark humor and asked the local undertaker for a discount. At another wedding reception, Wilson was asked by a friend what would they do with the sandwiches and cake. She followed up by saying that they should save them for the funeral. Autopsies had found that her husband had traces of incesticides in the digestive system, and that was all the information police needed to make the arrest. Mary Elizabeth Wilson was sentenced to death on the two accounts of murder. The sentence was dropped later to life in prison, but she still died four years later due to natural reasons, 1962. Number 7. Betty Lou Beats Women are underestimated a lot, but Betty Lou Beats shows that they should be taken quite seriously. While her second husband survived being shot to death, her fourth and fifth husbands didn't make it out alive from the marriage. In 1983, Betty reported her fifth husband, a retired firefighter, Jimmy Don Beats, missing. Police found his boat floating and assumed that he had probably drowned. Her son came forward two years after the incident and confessed that he helped her mother kill her husband for insurance money. They not only found Beat's body in a wishing well, but also found her fourth husband, Doyle Wayne Barker, buried underneath a storage shed. Betty tried to pin her son, saying that her son Jimmy murdered his father in an argument. She buried the body to protect him, but Jimmy and his sister testified against their mother. She was sentenced to death after the jury found her guilty. However, the defense argued that she was abused her whole life, and the sentence was changed. Still, George W. Bush, Texas governor, denied the demands and stayed to watch the execution in February 2000. Number 8. Betty Newman All five of Betty Newman's husbands died mysteriously. First husband was shot in 1970, two decades after their divorce, and the murder of her second husband in the 1950s was never really figured out. In 1965, her third husband allegedly committed suicide, but two shots went through his head, which is quite suspicious. Suspicious. The fates of her later husbands were similar as one was re-shot in 1986 and the other in 2007. Namir's son committed suicide in 1985 and she was named beneficiary of a $10,000 life insurance policy. The brother of her fourth husband convinced the police to reopen the case. She was found to have numerous driver's licenses, credit cards, and secret bank accounts in other people's names and had hired hitmen for most of the hits. But before she could be tried and the case could be proceeded, she died from complications from cancer in 2011. That's a wrap for this video. Thanks for watching.